Hello developers, welcome back to iCodeIt. In this video, we are going to talk about how to use React Query to implement the uh, infinity scrolling uh, functionality. Uh, in previous videos, we have already talked about how to use the native, um, uh, what do you call it, the fetch API to um, implement it. But we have already saw that in the many um, moving parts, there are many uh, status uh, variables need to manager. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the uh, more mature um, library to handle all these complexities. So let's get started. In previous video, we have already implemented the functionality. And if we only scroll, we can see that new um, pagination is being used already. Uh, but there are a few defects kind of. Um, so if we look at the uh, console log, there are some duplicated item being added. That is because we are uh, initially uh, fetching the data, uh, you know, uh, in a use effect block uh, for the first run. And uh, later on, when we have uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, intersection happened, we will do the fetch next. And we have a few variables like a page uh, has more that man maintaining all the um, status internally and we will handle this kind of manually. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about using the React Query to simplify this logic and make it more uh, robust handling the keys or complexities inside that uh, React Query. So firstly, let's uh, install the package um, of the React Query. So obviously, uh, the request query is renamed to time stack query. So let's install the time stack red query first into our local uh, and see that in the dependency. And the API we're going to use from the uh, record query will be um, the use infinity query. So before uh, so it's, it's, that's called called use infinity query. Uh, we're going to use this API for our uh, infinity scoring. Uh, but before that, we need to set it up. Uh, so very quickly, let's go to the uh, uh, application and we need to do the, all the necessary work here. Uh, we firstly need the uh, query, the, uh, query client and uh, wrap our application inside a query client provider and passing this query client as a client. That's pretty standard uh, approach. So let's go to the main.tsx and uh, wrap a, uh, this application around that query provider. So firstly, we'll uh, click this um, query client and then uh, it's called query client uh, provider. Uh, we'll import that and also use the query client um, and uh, we just wrap it replicate it into that provider. So this is basically the setup. Uh, and uh, then in our application, we can use the finite query. So if you have used the request query, uh, you're probably familiar with the use query. Uh, and uh, but today we're going to use a different hook. It's, it's a use infinite query. There are a few different uh, here. We will need to provide uh, obviously, the um, the query function will be accepting a um, parameter uh, compared to the normal uh, query function, and also you will need to define the you know the initial uh, pagination parameter and uh, how to get the next um, page parameter. Uh, what's the previous per, uh, per parameter? But in our case, we don't have to use the um, the previous page uh, parameter. So we'll just purely uh, implement the get next page uh, parameter. So um, as you can see, it, it has a lot of um, um, fields, uh, but we're not going to use all of them because we have already got the fetch codes um, function. So that's will be used as a query uh, function. And uh, we just copy it over and only use some of them. Uh, we don't need these, these options. We don't need this get previous parameter. Probably. 
and the query function uh, and yeah that's pretty much what we need so we will need to import the infinite query first and for the query key we just give it a name that's um, how uh, Red Query reference your um, request basically uh, that will identify uh, this request or query and uh, it will use that for, uh, to update the status or track all the uh, uh, status like uh, it's pending or it's requesting uh, things like that uh, we just give it the name as uh, codes let's say um, and the function here uh, could parameter um, page parameter is the one that has the uh, the page information basically so we'll use that to uh, fetch codes and uh, uh, this is a parameter name so we will keep that as is we can give, give it default value as one and then it will call the get codes uh, with one and it will return the uh, structure um, and uh, we probably don't need this all these for now but we do need the last page object um, and uh, a tricky thing here about and the one interesting thing about the last page here is this object uh, last page is an object that we need to um, like unwrap here uh, we will need to read from the last page object and um, because uh, React Query will manage all the page information like uh, the cursor, the does it has a next step or not, uh, all the details. So we will need to unwrap it and uh, following the convention that React Query is using. So the get next page parameter will be used, will be called by uh, Red Query itself, it will try to use the pagination information from your backend API and ex extract the information needed as the next page. The response from the backend will be paginated uh, codes, so we will make it sure um, we extract from that object. And obviously, we don't have the next cursor stuff, so what we have is uh, we have a meta dot. Uh, current page uh, we will uh, return uh, the current page plus one that will be used as a next page parameter obviously we will need a type uh, for the using fan query to return uh, let's do that as so and we will need the query key to be uh, like so and now it's uh, kind of how you use the hook and uh, the most important thing obviously is uh, return value from this hook so there are a few things that are very uh, useful so the first thing will be the data of course and uh, we will need has next page and fetch next page right so these things are very important because we will need to check and uh, does we do we have next page um, and uh, obviously we will need to uh, modify this a little bit because uh, uh, when the last page object uh, we get from the backend says we don't have any more page we will return on defy so it will um, tell the red query that we don't have any next pages so let's do this first uh, and um, we'll see if um, last page dot metadata dot has more uh, we return these uh, current page plus one otherwise uh, we just return undefined so that will tell uh, red query that we don't have any uh, next pages uh, all right so the data um, we get from the uh, the server side will be uh, has a different shape so we need to make sure um, we need to like a uh, console log it first and say how do we are unwrap it basically so uh, console log that for for now and let's see uh, what the uh, rect application says it was undefined and then it will has 
uh, data structure. It has pages, and pages has the metadata and the quotes, and uh, also it has a um, page parameter, and it's uh, array, and uh, it has uh, you know a uh, page uh, information. So yeah, that's good, uh, and uh, we can use this data for rendering. Uh, we will have that data. We don't use the code list anymore because code list is our uh, self-managing the status. We need to um, unwrap the data from the data um, returned by the React query. So data dot pages dot codes. So for each page, we'll do another map. Uh, let's do a fragment. And uh, we will need to set a key here. Uh, probably we can use the um, index. Obviously, we need the preferences uh, here. The key will be index for now. It doesn't matter in such case. We'll return the fragment. And uh, inside that uh, fragment, we will have the uh, page dot uh, sorry page dot code the map and uh, for each map we'll just render the uh, details so data itself could be empty uh, page itself could be empty so we just uh, making sure that we can get data from it uh, so now we it looks like uh, working we have this structure and now let's uh, remove the unnecessary part let's say for example we fetch query fetch next uh, we now like uh, initially we'll do this uh, fetch next and uh, also we do that in the uh, observer uh, when the intersection happened we will do that so now instead of doing this we just uh, get rid of these uh, we will not using the have a fetch next we don't have the page and don't do the ha has more because we have the that managed by, uh, by for us by um, red query and we don't need this uh, query code list and we use this one so we have a flag called has next page so we'll use that uh, here let's see we have next page and intersecting if that happens we will fetch uh, next page and um, initially, um, it will trigger the uh, the query with the very first parameter, which is one, and then uh, it's it will like the following pagination will be called when we have an intersection and we have a uh, next page. We do this uh, uh, fetch next page. All right, let's have a look at the browser. So now it has this. Uh, page one and as you can see it only uh, fetched once and if we scroll uh, it doesn't look like it's uh, working so if we scroll to the bottom it doesn't seem like it's triggered uh, that's interesting uh, let's have another look at the code so now uh, observer is not triggered uh, because the has next page is false, I guess, um, somehow. <clears throat> it seems like the has next page changed, but the user effect didn't catch that. So we'll need to add that to the uh, dependency check. So whenever it is changed, it will update the uh, criteria here, and then it will fetch the uh, next page. So with that change, let's have a look at the look in the browser. So we scroll and it's load more. Uh, being printed that's great so and uh, I wonder why it doesn't shows up the uh, actual result if you look at the network it fetched the page 11 oh that, <coughs> that's because we are using a uh, uh, string written from the backend so we need to convert this uh, to a number first and then plus one and there will be uh, two, three, four, uh, and so on. Let's have another look. Uh, the page one is already loaded. If we scroll, 
it's page two, scroll again, page three, four, five, six, nine, and the ten, right? So when we reach the ten and we, we scroll, it doesn't trigger anymore. That's perfect. That's exactly what we are looking for. Uh, it's great. Um, we probably can use this um, has more, so has next page flag uh, in here as well. So if we if we had next page, we just uh, load more. Otherwise, we just throw in a empty um, string. And uh, yeah, let's have another look. So initially, the scroll bar is like this small, and it doesn't have any arrows in the um, console. And if we scroll, it's getting more and more data fetched from backend. Um, when sh once it's reached the 10, we don't have any load more placeholder any, uh, here. That's great. Uh, we probably can use like uh, uh, is fetching, um, you know, is fetching next page, is fetching arrow, or in all the um, decent state management like uh, uh, fetching, loading, validating the cache, or it has arrow, uh, things like that. We can make it more realistic. Uh, but for now, I think it's it's good as a uh, demo to showcase how to use the use Infinity Query to implement this kind of uh, feature. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about this. And you could do some additional extractions, like uh, extract this um, Infection Observer as a hook, and uh, make it the application code much shorter. Uh, but we probably will leave that as now and for now i think it's it's pretty good it's already handling all the complexity for us we don't need to manage the uh, references we don't need to uh, think of the um the other complexity only all these uh, statuses are managed by the react query uh that's pretty cool and we don't have these duplications in a uh, cache yeah, that's pretty much about this video I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions around regular interview questions or system questions, uh, feel free to add a comment below and please share the video to anyone you think that will be helpful for them. And I will see you next time. Bye.